Hey, yo, what's up? Today we're going to be playing Blue Ridge Cabin Home. And not just any Blue Ridge Cabin Home, but J.D. Crow's Blue Ridge Cabin Home from the Bluegrass Album Band. You can support your boy by signing up for my Patreon, where you can find the tablature to this and many other transcriptions. And if you want to do more, you can smack that like button, leave a comment, and hit subscribe for more Fly Banjo content. Sup? Hey, yo, what's up, party people? So what we're going to do now is an isorhythmation analysis of uh, J.D. Crow's kickoff that I just played. So basically what isorhythmation is, is playing the melody and adding rolls to it. And what we're going to do now is actually take the rolls out of the melody and just leave the, the simple melody. And you'll see that is what I have written right here in uh, my trusty program table edit. This, what I've highlighted, sounds like this. <laughs> The second half is going to be similar and it's going to go like this. Okay, so um, this measure, measure 13, corresponds to measure 1. Um, what you'll see here, um, how this is, iso how measure 13 is isorhythmated is with square rolls entirely and a little bit of slides a little bit of pull-offs but the thing you're going to train yourself to see is these little four note groups um and what i see honestly i actually do not like having um tablature with the written in slides um i i, I like it to look like this i like it to look like that a little more because the slides and the pull off, it's 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 just too much. It's just too much. But uh, just so things are a little more accurate, I'll write that in there. But really, what I want you to see is the rolls. I want you to see the rolls. I want you to imagine that thumb one, thumb two. This one, thumb one, thumb two. This one, thumb one, thumb two. This one, thumb one, thumb two. And like your know, thumb index, thumb middle is what I'm saying. So that's how the first measure is isorhythmated. <laughs> And that's coming from this. Okay, cool. Moving on. Measure two. Um, the ISA, the simple, the D isorhythmated melody is this. And we're gonna we're gonna end on on that note. Uh, so how is this? What is this? Okay. So what is happening there? The first thing that my mind sees. Um, again, it's it's I'm seeing. I'm seeing, I saw a forward roll. I see that's a forward roll. I see this is a forward roll. Again, you got to train yourself to like forget to see the hammer-ons. Um, and like it, it would be something like that without the hammer-on. That's what I just played. This is what I just played. This thing. Um, and again, that is, well, again, that is a seven note forward roll. We got one, two, three, one, two, three, and then four. So like you, I, I would call that, it's like a seven note thumb forward. Um, and then you can write, I'd write in that little hammer on just to be, um, what's that word? Uh, uh, it's a math word. <laughs> rigorous. That's it. Just to be rigorous, I'll write it in so it's a little more accurate for y'all when, um, I am going to put this on, uh, Patreon. Uh, let's see. Um, so again, what I'm seeing, how this is, how is that, how is this puppy, um, isorhythmative? Forward rolls, the seven note forward roll. And then he has a little break in that section. Remember that's okay. Now this little section right here, um, that guy is a five note forward backward roll. You're gonna get used to this roll. Um, that guy is pretty hip because I want you to learn this. This note right here is a pivot note. This pivot note. Uh, takes place both in this thumb forward roll and this middle reverse roll. It's a three note thumb forward. I call it a thumb forward because it starts on the thumb, plays thumb, index, middle. And then this guy I call a middle reverse because it starts with the middle and plays a reverse roll. So um, this little roll is very nifty. It's a really good roll. It's a five note forward backward roll starting on the thumb. So again, that's a, you got a little thumb forward. Uh, middle reverse with a pivot note. That's an important concept to keep in mind as we move further, uh, further talking about rolls. 
um, and this, uh, this right there, that's just thumb to thumb to, and that's ISO rhythm baiting this. Like right, um, this this guy right here. You just add you just add the middle finger up at the top, and you get that. And you get a really nice rolling sound. Okay, cool. Moving on to measure three. Uh, that is D isorhythmated by played like this. All right. JD Crow. And that's fancy. What happens here is it's a displaced forward backward roll. And when I say forward backward roll here, there's actually an eight note forward backward roll. How forward backward rolls, how I, uh, how I traditionally uh, uh, analyze them is in four note groups. This is displaced by an eighth note. Um, there's two sixteenths right there. We're not thinking about those. This right there, that is a four note thumb forward roll. So again, starts on the thumb, thumb one, two thumb. What's really important, uh, the secret to scrub style banjo as far as like my an an analysis of Bela Flex understanding of um, Scruggs style is four note sections of three note rolls are very important. This thing right here, that's a four note, that's a four note, uh, four note roll, but it's a four note section of a three note roll. Thumb forward right here, that's a four note middle reverse roll. Starts in the middle, that's why we say middle, middle reverse. So we got a thumb forward, middle reverse. Basically that equals a forward backward roll. It's a little strange because this note right here, you'll pr you're probably used to it right there like this. But JD Crows, he's he's a bad boy, so he throws the thumb right there. So it's a little strange. Um, okay, great. So there's your there's there's your forward backward roll, um, and then you start with the the. Yeah, you start and end it with like two like a um, I don't know. Anytime you can use your index, uh, use your thumb instead of your index, I would for more power and more tone. This note right here, I play with my thumb. This note, I play with my thumb. And how does this measure end? Boom, square roll. Thumb one, thumb two. You begin to see them everywhere. Boom. And this this measure doesn't really have any melody. I mean, if you look at this. Um, it doesn't really have any melody, so there's 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 a that's the that's just the the definitive bluegrass lick. How I understand this, this is kind of like a this is actually it's kind of a um, it's kind of it's kind of like a forward roll, but it's not. Um, this one right here is again that same uh, five note forward backward roll with your pivot note being that note right there. Uh, um, and then um, that I kind of see as a, a thumb reverse roll. So with this kind of stuff, you get used to, un at least this is, remember, I'm trying to do this to give you guys some vocabulary and analysis tools so you can understand what the hell is happening in bluegrass banjo. Uh, so yeah, you got, um, uh, since it's like a forward roll, you got a forward roll, you got a backward roll, and then actually the backward roll, oh, look at that. That right there is a five note backward roll. Uh, that's a five note middle reverse roll. And then you'll begin to see these as long as you understand what I'm saying. It starts on the middle finger and follows through with the backward roll for five notes. And then that note I, I'll replace with the thumb for more tone. But nonetheless, it still basically functions as a, as a reverse roll. Okay, cool. On to the next measure. This guy right here, thumb forward. Again, the melody is going to be the same. The only thing that's different is this, is this measure. Instead of doing this, it's going to go like this. Uh, and so, more or less, these are just going to be variations. So, for instance, this measure, it's going to be a variation of this measure. So let's take it. Let's let's roll it. Uh, let's anal let's, let's analyze it with rolls. This roll right here, thumb forward, and it actually ends. Um, I'll say it ends there as again a five note thumb forward. 
And it's focusing on that note, that, uh, that B note. Okay, cool. Well, the third, this song, he recorded in B flat, so whatever. You, you know what I mean. So, uh, um, so that's a thumb, thumb forward, five note thumb forward. We got this, that's a pinch, which, which is legit. We got this square roll, this right here, um, this roll right here, uh, thumb one, thumb two. So this ends with an eight note square roll. And you get used to this. It's a very Scruggs style thing. Having a lot of square rolls. I mean, that's how you get this sound. And like this guy, you got an eight note, an eight note square roll. It's a variation, but nonetheless, the right hand stays the same. So it's really good to get in the habit of just playing the square rolls. Okay, um, it looks like this guy doesn't it doesn't have the hammer on because probably because this is all fancy right here. But again, that to me instantly seven note forward roll, seven note thumb forward. And like the thumb, the thumb would be right there, but I'm just bringing the thumb there because you want thumb. The thumb has all the tone. The thumb is the king. Um, and now this guy, this is a this is a pretty sweet. Uh, this is a pretty sweet little measure. Uh, uh, uh. Remember we said that thing about the pivot notes? That is a pivot note. Um, again, what roll is this right here? Square roll, baby. When you start thinking about square rolls, they help you out because what he's doing is this. You know what I mean? He's adding rolls to this. And it's square roll. Okay, what's happening here? Um, that looks like, a, again, one of those like five note forward backward rolls. Um, two pivot notes. You got that pivot note and you got that pivot note. Um, and that's how you connect this. I mean, that's basically, uh, um, I mean, if you want to look at it at a, in, a, in a four note, four note uh, analysis, this is an, it's a, uh, it's an alternate index roll. You got thumb one, two, one. So that's, it's like a thumb one, alt one. It's an in, it's an alternate index roll that begins with a thumb one. And you go into square roll. This this roll again, we have the eight note forward backward roll. Uh, uh, I won't I won't go into the, and into it a bunch, but it's just it helps to hear it again. Four note thumb forward, four note middle reverse. Starting with you got a pickup right there. Um, so that is this much. Uh, a really good D lick, a really good D lick in all bluegrass banjos. And then um, this part right here, um, that's like that's that's essentially this, except we're adding. It should be a square roll. I mean, I would have improvised it with a square roll, but JD Crow didn't. That's just how he did it. And you know what? I'm not going to argue with J.D. Crow. But right here, well, actually, you know what? This right here, that's thumb one, thumb one. Uh, thumb one, thumb two. Yeah, that. Thumb one, thumb two. But he has a pickup being a thumb one. Okay, cool. And then we get to uh, the hot licks. Again, there's no melody happening in, in this measure. Um, so this guy... Uh, What you gotta uh, pay attention to here is where are the where are the square rolls and where are the forward rolls. Um, for me, oh no, don't do this to me. Okay, yeah. So uh, this to me right there. Uh, this one it kind of has it kind of implies this. It kind of implies that. I don't think he plays it. I would have written that in. Um, but if he did, if he did imply that. What I see here, index forward, one, two, three, four, five. That's a five note index forward roll. Has that as the pivot, even though he doesn't play it. And then he does, and then he does right there, one, two, three, four, five, a five note middle reverse. So it does, it's like, again, it's a kind of, it's a forward roll, starts on the index, has that pivot note right there, goes into a middle reverse. Um, and it's, it's, it's interesting. Like I don't actually think like this <clears throat> when I'm playing, but <clears throat> sorry, but it turns into more of a feeling, feeling the um, the forward and the backward rolls kind of happening 
like one after the other. This guy right here, index forward. That's one, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, and it actually goes right here, seven, eight. Seven, eight, so it's like, a, like an eight note index forward. It starts with the index, stays with the index forward. And this guy right here, uh, what's that roll? Uh, that's actually one, two, thumb two. That's, that's an alternate middle roll. That's kind of like the Foggy Mountain Breakdown roll. One, two, thumb two. Actually, this roll right here, that's an eight net Foggy Mountain Breakdown roll. Um, but you had to pull off and hammer on. Uh, that's that's what that is. One two thumb two. What I have highlighted right here. One two thumb two. That's an alternate alternate. That's an alternate middle roll. One two, alt two. This right here. Thumb forward for how many notes? Look at that. One two three four five six seven eight nine. That's a nine note um, nine note thumb forward. Uh, uh. And then it does a reversal right there. Um, and then it follows through with the reversal all the way to there. So it's like two, one thumb, two, one. But right there, um, I, I would play that with the thumb because it's more tone. Uh, yeah, I hope this gives you a little insight into how I, um, how I analyze and, and, and apply the language that I've invented to understand rhythm. Uh, I went to Berklee College of Music and they really don't teach much about rhythm. All this nomenclature I had to invent for myself to understand Bela Fleck's playing um, and, and how Bela Fleck like, kind of copies Earl Scruggs or applies Scrugg style because Scrugg style is so simple uh, and it follows a few rules. And I really want to help um, just shed light on those rules and bring language to it so it's easier to understand. So uh, I hope this has been beneficial. If you guys would like less, um, if you guys would like lessons, reach out to me um, on my, my, it's like rickymeyer.com slash lessons. You can find it there. Uh, please sign up for the Patreon. Show me some support. Um, I'm looking to do a few more of these in the future. Hopefully I can get these out faster than instead of spending 20 hours on a video, I can spend like five or just like, you know, less time. And um, hopefully this will be more beneficial to you and it'll make me a little more, um, a little pro prolific, so I'm not spending fucking like 45 hours doing one goddamn video. But yeah, I'll uh, post, po post this tab on my Patreon. Um, and if you want, there's actually the second break right there. Um, so I do have the second break already tabbed out, and you can get that on the Patreon. Um, all right, guys. I love you. Thanks for listening. Peace out.